Abundance. It's a topic everybody's interested in, but very few people really understand how to make it happen. It's that elusive quality, the ability to have the life that you want for yourself, for your family, for those you love, the ability to travel, the ability to see what you want to see, do what you want to do, and experience what you want to experience on your terms. How do we create it? When I was 17 years old, I had the privilege of going and hearing this man, Jim Rohn. And, uh, I remember I pulled up to the South Coast Plaza Hotel in Orange County, California, in my 1968 Baja bug, and uh, turned the thing off and handed the keys to the gentleman and said, take good care of this baby, as it exploded in the back. <laughs> it had that little afterburn that was going on. I was wearing a two-piece blue leisure suit I got at the thrift store, a fake gold chain, and I went in there to go check out this event and figure out how I was going to take things to the next level. And uh, as a 17-year-old boy, I'd read a lot of books. I was very passionate. I was a man looking for answers, a boy looking for answers. And then this silver-haired gentleman who had so much wisdom stood up, and he shared so much that night that touched me in just three and a half hours. But in the area of abundance, he answered a question for me that I had not been able to answer, and it shifted the quality of my life, as I'm sure this session will for you. And what it came down to is I grew up in an environment where you know, I had four different fathers that certainly didn't feel like an abundance. <laughs> it felt like scarcity because they never lasted. They were gone. Um, I grew up in an environment where there was no money even for food at times. Um, we had a Thanksgiving where literally we had no food and, and we wouldn't have starved, but we weren't going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, there was a knock at the door and that knock changed my life because it was someone who delivered food for us. It, it was just a delivery man, the person who actually sent it, that didn't acknowledge who they were. And the man said, this is just a gift for you and your family. And my father didn't react very well to it at the time, um, didn't want charity, but out of necessity he took it in. And I just remember at that time thinking to myself, why is it that my father worked so hard? Because he did work, he wasn't unemployed. And yet here we are with no money on Thanksgiving, not even for food. And it just my whole life had been that way and I just I couldn't understand why we were living on the other side of the tracks I lived in what I thought was a rich community it was actually a middle class community lower middle class but everybody else we lived right next to the railroad tracks quite literally and everyone seemed like living a different lifestyle and I couldn't understand and my father I felt thought was as good as their fathers as a person why did we have such lack why was there such scarcity why did they have so much abundance and us not have any and I really didn't have the answer until I sat in that room with Jim Rohn. And he asked a question. He said, you know, what does it really take to do well financially? What does it take to have real economic abundance? And he said, you must bring value to the marketplace. I'll never forget. And I thought, what the hell is he talking about? Value to the marketplace. And he made it very clear that we all have value in our own souls, but that's not what we get paid for. We also don't get paid for effort. We don't get paid for our time. We get paid to find a way to add value. And the question he asked at the time was, how is it possible that some people earn twice as much money as you do, or four times, or five times, or 10 times as much money in the same amount of time? And he said, the answer is because they found a way to add more value. That is the secret to abundance. Do more for others than anyone else on earth. And if you can do that, you can build a brand, you can build a company, you can build a life, you can build friendships that are beyond compare. And so that simple little philosophy was really simple. And he went a little deeper. He was very specific. He said, you know, if you look at it, I remember at the time he said, if you work for McDonald's in those days, he said, you make two fifty an hour. And I remember he said, you know, somebody's working, making two fifty an hour and they're barely surviving. Today, working at McDonald's, you make $8 an hour by contrast, with a little inflation. But this is 1977. And he said, so why do these people make so little? And somebody, that, he gave the example back then of the gentleman who was uh, the head of Disney, and he's made $52 million in the same year. One person's making two fifty an hour, somebody else makes $52 million. He said, how is that possible? Isn't that fair? Isn't that unfair? And I remember at the time him pausing and saying, well, anybody can learn within an hour how to really do the numbers and use a cash register. In fact, today, you don't even know the numbers. You just push a button with a picture on it, right? So anybody can do that. It's not being disrespectful. So there's not a lot of added value. In fact, soon robotics will probably take most of that over because it's, it's not something that expands the human spirit. It's not a complex task that makes us expand or grow and offer something. 
But he said, you know, the guy that figured out how to turn Disney around with having trouble is worth $52 million because he's bringing joy and happiness and love and laughter to millions and millions of people. So if you help millions of people, you're going to do well. In the Bible, it says, if you wish to become great, learn to become the servant of many. Which, as Jim used to say, is, you know, that means there's nothing wrong with wanting to be great. But greatness comes from serving a large number of people or at a deep level, one of the two. And so you look at it today, and today the story is the same. You work at McDonald's, it's $8 an hour. And I just got finished writing a book where I interviewed 50 of the most successful financial people on earth that started with nothing. And you look at a guy last year, David Tepper was the highest paid hedge fund guy. He got paid $3.5 billion last year. Now that looks like incredibly unjust experience. You know, it's insane. It's insane to think that that man's going to make 3.5 and someone else is going to make 15000 a year at $8 an hour, basically. How, how could you justify that? Well, if you find a way to add more value, you can earn more and you can be abundant. Now, he figured a way to get a 40% return for people. In a world where most people are putting their money in a savings account, getting 33 basis points, one-third of 1%. One if he got people a 1% return, he'd be having 300% more value. But he's adding 12,000% more value for his investors. These people have taken their money and they're able to do things for their families, for their businesses, for the causes they care about because he's growing it at a multiplied level because he developed this incredible set of skills. And how did he do it? The way Jim Rohn teaches. He learned to work harder on himself. He learned to master skills no one else had that could add value to others. So introducing you to Jim Rohn in abundance, I just want to mark out that you can earn 10 times more, 20 times more, 100 times more in the same amount of time, if you work harder on yourself than anything else, if you find a way to do more for others than anyone else, and then it goes beyond money. Then it goes to understanding abundance as an emotion, like love, like joy. It's the most amazing thing. The more of it that we give, the more of it we experience inside. So I hope as you listen to the words of this teacher that set me on a journey that's been a magnificent journey for me because it's helped me to help not only myself and my family but millions of people i hope that this journey into greater abundance is one you take seriously and that you get excited about and that you absorb fully and you take notes about it so whatever you hear is driven deeper and i hope you repeat and come back to it again and again enough times until the words start to become emotions and the emotions are converted into actions and those actions cause growth and added value in you and all those that you have the privilege to touch. So without further ado, please meet my dear friend and mentor, Jim Rohn.